Hello. This afternoon I'm messing around with magnetos. These are both BTH KC2 series. They amazingly are brand new. They might not quite look it, but they are. They came on a Jap that I bought about 10 years ago that's now on the aircraft, but that Jap was boxed up in 1936 and apart from occasionally being filled up with oil, it was never run until 2016 when I fitted to a FT after the crankshaft broke on the previous engine. That really is a story for another day. Anyway, they're rather lovely these mags. I took them apart. They were very stiff um, when I got them. They were very stiff to turn. And I took them apart and cleaned them out and the grease inside, they've got a ball race here and here. The grease was absolutely solid. It was like putty. It was about 80 years old. So they were stripped, cleaned, put back together and now they work a treat. Now I've put them on the bench like this for a reason. This is the propeller end of the job. There we are, wooden propeller. And uh, the propeller rotates that away, which is clockwise as I'm looking at it. And the magnetos are run through a bevel box and they both turn backwards. So this one turns this way. Should have quite a healthy spark. I put these discharge wires on because you shouldn't really wind a magneto over without discharging it because of the high voltage. And this is the impulse mag. Hopefully you can see. It's got a lovely spark. I have run these on the aircraft and I've flown with this magneto and it was absolutely brilliant. I haven't flown with this magneto and there's a reason for that. Unfortunately, it's got a strip thread. If I turn it upside down, I'll show you there's, uh, you see it's got good written on it. I sort of scribble all over magnetos when I've tested them. It's got four bolt holes, one, two, three, four. And as bolted to the aircraft, the advanced and retard mechanism bolts through the engine case and through this corner bolt on each one. And unfortunately, this corner bolt has been stripped. They are different lengths. The bolt lengths are different. Three short bolts, one long bolt. And I think what happened was somebody put a short bolt in there, tightened it up. It does tighten right to the end, but that's not the point. It's actually taken about three quarters of the thread out. So this afternoon's task is to bush that and make it serviceable so it can be used on the aircraft. So I'm planning to machine up an insert to go in there, basically drilling that out to about, well, the tapping size for half inch Whitworth, and then threading it half inch Whitworth, and then putting a steel insert in. You might wonder why I'm not using aluminium. I don't particularly like using aluminium. There's hardly any weight difference using a little piece of steel. It'll have a much stronger thread in it too. This is a piece of EN8. Um, she was lurking around under the bench. I know it is EN8, which is a really good general purpose workshop steel. And the bolts that normally go into here are 3 8 by 16, which effectively is a, a 3 8 width width. So the tapping size for that is 5 16. And so I'm going to make the insert. I'll make it over long, make it about an inch long or so, and then we can try screwing it in and when, we, when we've got a nice amount of insert we can carefully screw it in and, and cut it off. We'll end up with a good strong repair. It could be maybe held in with a little bit of JB weld as well. But we'll see once it's screwed in, see how secure it appears to be. After all, once it's screwed in and uh, wire locked on the aircraft it can't actually unwind at all as it is. Well, hopefully. To drill that hole out, I'm going to need to hold this upside down in the in the vise under the drilling machine, and I don't want to risk damaging anything on the mag, so I'm going to strip it down a bit. And whilst we do that, I'll show you the innards. Now these are rather nice. These are rotating points magnetos. So as you can see, as the thing actually runs, so the the cam ring stays still, and the points go round and round, which might sound a bit Irish, but it's not at all actually. They're remarkably good magnetos. 
I've only ever had one failure and I'll show you what the failure was because again they're so good that you can strip them. You can take all this part off so you can take the, the points off the end and take the spring out and everything without upsetting the timing of the magneto. You can do this on the aircraft, you don't need to. Uh, you, know, you can just undo this little centre screw, pop the bolt out. And if you just get a screwdriver, a little taper drive, it doesn't need much force, you just need a just enough to get behind. There we are. And that all rotates. There's the brush that runs on there. The uh, ball race is right behind that. Now what breaks on these occasionally, very occasionally, is this spring. And it's just screwed in at each end. And if it breaks, and it's the only failure I've ever had on the way to Bobman one day, one magneto, the engine note changed and I realised one magneto was dead. But I was almost at Bobman so I landed anyway and took the end cap off and there was a broken spring. But I carry broken springs in the aeroplane as spares along with a few little tools. Five minutes later it was all fixed, which is excellent. They're really good mags. So as well, I take these off. These are the brushes. Normally the HT leads would be screwed into these blocks. Obviously I've got my sort of rather homemade bit of welding rod discharger on there. I went to somebody's shop recently, someone who does magnetos properly, and I was very pleased to see that he had an exactly the same lash up arrangement. Fortunately quite a lot of vintage motorcycles have a very similar series BTH. In fact they call them a KC. They're slightly different um, because these were ones for aeroplanes. But it means there's people who around who can rewind armatures and points and springs and all the other goodies and condensers are as easy as anything to get. Now this cover which has the nice BTH script on it, is just a cover. It's just a aluminium pressing, which should pop off like so. There we are, and it's got the BTH letters in the top. So that's a bit better. I'm a bit happier holding that in the vise now. So let's let's go ahead and drill it. I've actually threaded this uh, half inch BSF rather than Whitworth. Uh, Whitworth was sort of ideal, you meant to use a coarser thread as possible in aluminium, but it doesn't need to be two extremes and the half inch uh, Whitworth thread is so sort of deep and coarse it was an absolute swine to cut. So anyway, BSF's a uh, suitable compromise. Obviously it's still going to be Whitworth inside for the bolt. So I'm going to drill the magneto body now because I don't want to go and cut this thread and end up with it too loose. I prefer to 
drill and tap the body of the magneto, our half inch BSF, I've got half inch BSF uh, taps here, starting tap with a taper on it and a finishing tap which is much more square and they're, they're nearly new, I've only used them a few times. Plug for Tracy Tools here, if you need taps and dies I always get mine from Tracy Tools, they don't sponsor me. Very good though, mail order, all the rest of it, not expensive, all manner of funny sizes. Um, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's drill the magneto body and tap the threads and then we'll come back to making this so it's a good fit. And when it's a good fit then we can just tap the whip with thread in the inside and uh, we're nearly finished then. The correct uh, tapping size for half inch BSF is uh, 7 sixteenths. So I've got 7 sixteenths drill in. I've set the depth stop around the back here. You can't see it, but uh, I've used a technical piece of wire to measure because the problem is sometimes aluminium starts picking up. I don't want the drill to go too deep and you know, bugger up the magneto. That'd be really stupid. So I've set the depth stop. So let's turn it on and carefully. quite as deep as the original hole so I'm just going to set the depth stop a little deeper and uh, drill it once more. Looks like about an eighth of an inch but that's all right I was erring on the side of caution. A tiny bit more. I might as well have it the depth I can. Famous last words. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, well that looks pretty good. I think it's time to try the insert. But before I try the insert, I'm just going to clean the thread, polish it up in the Y wheel next door because you get a lot of burrs when you cut a thread. I always like polishing them out on a rotary wire wheel. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and try it. And that is a reasonably tight fit. Wood screw in though. Do with it probably being a little less tight, so I think I'm just going to take a very light cut on it again, and then clean it with the wire wheel again, and then try it.
again with a little bit more thread cut on it slightly deeper and yeah that's that's much better good so it's time to cut the thread the inside now the 5 16 Whitworth thread I think I've done the uh, ultimately stupid thing and gone and put the uh, Whitworth taps away I'm just going to find them again That's all the threading done. Uh, so just need cutting to length. Um, I'm going to, I've marked the top of it and I have actually had a little count. So I'm just gonna um, cut it down to size and square it up. And uh, then I think just thread it in. I don't think I'm gonna use any glue or anything like that. I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just gonna cut it to size and then uh, try it carefully in. Sometimes they cut a slot in the top and use a screwdriver to wind it. I've seen a couple done like that. That's not a bad way. Or I'll use a, a nut on one of the bolts and wind it in that way. Anyway, I'll cut it off first and just face it off, and then we can work out how to how to screw it in. get off if I can. It's a big file that I had earlier, but never mind. I might be able to very, very carefully cover that in tape and just put it in the lathe for a moment, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Well, I faced it off in the lathe, I held it in some tape, and then I put it on a bolt. It's a bit of a confession, this, I'm afraid. I put it on a bolt with a nut, wound it in, and it sat in there as flush as anything, and now I can't get it out. So that's fixed, that's perfect really. It takes the bolt, let's just try a bolt in it. It's one of the long bolts that holds the advanced retard mechanism and goes through the engine case into a steel fitting that's a nice tight screw fit into the parent aluminium and is flush so the mag will sit down firm. I sort of, well, disappointingly worked out very, very well. So the next thing I suppose is try the mag on an aeroplane at some point. But at least I can take it with me as a spare now, and it's a, it's a fully serviceable mag, which it wasn't before. So I'm going to wrap things up. I'll put the magneto together, put it back in the store. That's been a complete success. So thanks for watching. See you again soon.